what they're promising you is no grandchildren, which is literally death. Your line dies. And I don't think there's a chapter in the Old Testament where children aren't described as synonymous with wealth. You want to know if you're prosperous? You want to know if you're in God's favor? How many kids do you have? How many grandkids do you have? How are they doing? That's the oldest and most basic and will always be the most basic measure of prosperity. How are your descendants? And what they're promising you, every person in this room, is no descendants. No descendants. It's really that simple. You can reduce all these debates about climate or crime, all the weird sex stuff. I'm not even going to dignify it with a name. I'm just going to call it that weird sex stuff. But if they're promising you the opportunity to castrate your children, what are they really promising you? No grandchildren. The end of your line. And Solomon and David would like instantly recognize that as an act of total war against you and your people. Period. Because that's what that is. So they can't say any of this out loud because there's not one person who wants that product, extinction. The transgender um, agenda yeah. is not and you know that just by looking at it. This is not organic. Yeah. It's not. This was the biggest surprise to me, I think, of anything in the book. Uh, two of the biggest funders of the radical transgender movement in America are actually Chinese-based billionaires. I didn't know that. Yeah, one of them is Roy Singham. Uh, his organization, through the People's Forum, has done a lot uh, to support the, the radical transgender uh, movement. The other one is Joe Tsai. Joe Tsai is the co-founder of Alibaba. Um, which is a massive company. Uh, he has poured tens of millions of dollars into okay, so the trans. Are movement. either of them, no. you know, just big fans of trans? There's, 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 they're, they're, they are not trans themselves. There's yeah. no evidence. They have family members that are trans. But here, I think, is the kicker, Glenn. Both of them advocate strongly for these rights in the United States. They never bring them up in China. They never bring them up in China, where I think by anybody's calculation, the situation on, on you know, uh, gay rights and trans would be far more severe than it would be in the United right, so States. So let me just play devil's advocate. Yeah. Um, well, they actually believe in it, and here's the only place they can do it, and they're hoping that the West would get strong and that would then change China. Well, it could be, but the problem is that both of them take pro-CCP positions. Uh, I mean, to, to the toe the party line, there's no divergence. And the CCP has said they don't even want effeminate characters on television because it's going to demasculate China. So it seems to me quite absurd to say, I love the CCP, I'm all in. Yeah but I'm in favor of these trans rights. I think the more logical explanation is they view this as, as, a, as, a, as a form of warfare against the United so, States. Wow, what's going on everyone? It's Talks here today, and I have a question to ask you. What is the goal of the transgender cult? Now, this video is gonna be about my personal perspective on the transgender cult, why I think it's a cult, uh, why its goal is actually extinction. As you saw from the intro, those two, those two intros kind of summarize where i'm coming from with this commentary and i'd like to know your thoughts in the comment section below before we get into the next video uh, the next clip in this video i want to highlight an example of how gender reassignment surgery for minors may be the greatest medical maybe a medical history's greatest ethical scandal french report says as you can see many people foreign or other foreign countries they're banning puberty blockers. They're restricting some of this assignment stuff towards children because a lot of studies have been coming out and showing that there's a strong correlation with mental health, mental disorders associated with transgender, transgenderism. I already made a video. I made a video before about transgenderism, how it's associated with narcissism because only a narcissist can sit there and demand that you call them something or you perceive them something that they're not in reality. And to me, the reason why I call the transgender, uh, the transgenderism a cult is because essentially it's a religious act that like you're literally sacrificing the health of your child at the altar, at the altar of wokeism, of transgenderism, a clinic, a condition, sorry, a clinician prepared to recommend a double a mastectomy for a 16 year old girl already suffering from liver cancer, despite believing along with the girl's surgeon and orchologist that the cancer is probably due to hormones she has been prescribed. We're literally killing our kids. The trans activist house of cards ought to be collapsing. 
We need to bring more awareness to this. We need to be willing to bring this stuff up. Heidi, and then the funny part is when Matt Walsh went viral for what is his What is a Woman documentary, there was a woman in the documentary that defended puberty blockers. Oh, it's reversible. You can take it back at any time. In what sense, in common sense, in observable reality, do you think you can stop a train dead in its tracks and there'll be no damage done to the, tr the done to the cargo, done to the train? Purity, puberty goes one way, and if you block it, you don't think there'll be health risks to it? There was a lot of health squares that have been associated with using puberty blockers and we're prescribing this to children, impressionable children. What is the goal of transgenderism? Extinction. I honestly believe that. It's a way to lower, further lower the population numbers of a society. Why, why is it that Chinese billionaires would want it in the U.S., but they don't want it in their own country? If you want to know if someone's sincere, see if they follow the same advice that they give you. If someone's pushing for marriage... See if they're married themselves. See, this is a good way of checking if someone actually believes what they actually believe, for the most part, anyway. And enough is enough. I, I, I think we shouldn't be tolerating this stuff no more. And these trans cultists want to come out and get mad when we come out here. 32 out of 50 states have full bans, partial bans, or bans being considered in regards to training, transing children. I know it doesn't feel right, but we, we're winning the spiritual war against massive evil. This is why I say it's the transgender cult, because I don't think this is a, a, a movement based in any reality, based in any science, because this clip I'm about to show you, I'm showing you two clips. One's is going to be from a scientist and one's going to be from a congressman preaching at a church. And tell me in the comment section, don't they both sound like this, they, they're preaching to a religious group? Let's take a look. Humans have this urge to put you in a box. Are you with me or are you against me? Are you a boy or are you a girl? Is it high or is it low? Are you black or are you white? And anybody who's looked at the actual world will recognize that all of those features come on a spectrum. They're on a spectrum. And if they're on a spectrum, but you're forcing everybody into categories, that makes it easy for you to tribalize. But if, if, you, if instead you see everybody on a spectrum, you can't tribalize that because you can't put an easy divider. You have to recognize a continuum connects me to that person. And if, once you realize that, I think you're more prone to have a conversation. We, we, we live in a world... We, thanks for that guitar chord. Here's something else I'm not supposed to say. Ain't but two genders. Two genders. Ain't nothing but men and women. And I can already see WRL out there. They got their licking their pencils around, trying to write fierce as they can. Get every word of this here. Get every word of this. You can go to the doctor and get cut up. You can go down to the dress shop and get made up. You can go down there and get drugged up. But at the end of the day, you were just a drugged up, dressed up, made up, Cut up, man or woman. You ain't changed what God put in you, that DNA. You can't transcend God's creation. I don't care how hard you try. The transgender movement in this country, if there's a movement in this country that is demonic and that is full of anti the spirit of Antichrist, it is the transgender movement. Imagine that. Neil deGrasse Tyson says that 72 genders because he looked at the actual world. Trust the sign. This guy, didn't they both sound like they were just preaching? Didn't they sound religious? Both of them sound religious. One's a secular religion and one's not. There's only two genders in science and reality. And this whole spectrum argument is a cope. Spectrums only exist in abstract theory. When you gauge it based on the concept of measuring how many meters is the river going. Measurements is technically an abstract idea to transmit to somebody volume, length, dimensions. These are like I, like theoretical stuff. But in reality, you're dead or alive. Binary. You're kind of dead. Right? Like, get, you get what I'm trying to say here, right? It's to communicate the state of someone's being. That's what spectrums are supposed to 
do. What he's talking about, gender dysphoria, and I think Jordan Peterson made this point, and I think this is where I'm getting it from, is that gender dysphoria is a, a synonymous with personality uh, uh, types, personality types. There's different personalities, there's different forms, right? You could be a feminine man, a masculine woman. That's just you describing a personality, you're describing traits. And now, trust the science is saying associate traits with gender. Oh, you associate these trend, these gender, uh, these traits that's assumed to be masculine. You must be masculine. You must be a boy. Oh, you're a tom girl. I mean, yeah, you're a tomboy. You're a man. You're secretly a man. You're not actually a woman. You're a man. Transgenderism literally relies on sex, sex-based stereotypes. And if a woman happened to fit these sex-based stereotypes. Oh, yeah, you you suffering from gender dysphoria. Hey, you should cut your hair. You should dress more in boys' masculine clothing. This, yo, this is, I believe, transgenderism. When we look back 100 years from now, our great-grandkids are going to be like, yo, America was off the chain 2024. They had men being women. They were trying to castrate children. The same way we look at horror in the progressive era when they were euthanizing people. When they were pre preventing certain people from procreating because they had low IQs. Yes, in the progressive era, they were doing that. Oh, these certain people are, shouldn't be allowed to reproduce because they're weeds in this country. Margaret Sanger. We really rehashing our, we really repeating history all over again. And we're going to look back 100 years from now. We're going to look back and then this moment and we're going to have it in the same level of contempt as when the progressives were pushing genetic determinism, saying certain, certain groups of people shouldn't reproduce because they will lower the IQ of the nation based on speculative evidence. Oh, look at Jewish people in the 1960s. They have lower IQs than other people. Genetic determinism was saying that. Not realizing that the reason why Jewish people wasn't do, doing so well in IQ tests is because they, they didn't properly assimilate it to the culture yet. They didn't know English that well. But no, no, no. You jump straight to race. And progressives are literally doing the same thing today in 2024 with the transgender movement. With puberty blockers. England banned puberty blockers. This is what made me make this video. We're going to hear Vivek speak about this because this is concerning stuff. That people are leveraging science to justify ideological pushes. Not grounded in any real evidence. Just merely based on a theory. And now that the facts are coming in, now that the studies are coming out, showing the destructive uh, side effects of these things, everyone with common sense was like, see, I told you, because we can look back on history and see the patterns of behavior. Hey, I don't think it's smart to introduce a drug into someone's human body who is biologically a man. But you got uh, scientists like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson saying that, oh, it's because you want to fit people into a tribe. I mean, we're tribal by nature. This is why we have religion. This is why we have principles. This is why we try to be tribal based on ideas, based on a similar worldview. Tribalism, you will never eradicate out of human nature. That's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll agree with. You can never eradicate tribalism. But what you base on that tri what you base the tribalism on is what's wrong or right. You, tribalism based on race is superficial. Tribalism based on ideology, based on worldview, is more substantive than based on race, based on ethnicity. That's what I believe, honestly. And this idea of not being able to categorize it, it's, it's, it's trying to remove deductive reasoning from, this, from the conversation. Oh, it's a spectrum, it's a spectrum. How mad I am is a spectrum, but based on what you can observe from me, you know I'm angry. It's like they want to remove your ability to prescribe and understand what's going on. They, it's like they want to Say, hey, don't believe you're a lying eyes. This is another way of saying don't believe you're lying eyes because everything's a spectrum. No, it's either you're orienting yourself towards this direction or that direction. You're a female, that means you're a female. Even if you act masculine, you're still oriented towards feminine. You're still a woman. He doesn't want you to focus on the direction you're facing. He's just going to say, oh, you're either here or you're a little bit closer to here, but that doesn't necessarily make you a man or a woman. If I have a... If I failed my test, and, and I'll, I'll stop rambling and then we'll get into the Vivek's point, portion of the video. But if I fail a test, and I failed the test by 1%, can I say, oh, I kind of I kind of failed the test, I only missed it by one. Or the teacher's going to say, no, you failed the test. It's, it's they trying to murky the ability of people to call out reality. If, if me and a student pass the test, 
in various degrees. We still pass the test. If I pass the test with 80% and you pass the test with 100, we both still pass. It's a way of just, hey, without going to the needy greedy. This guy want to go into the needy greedy and say, oh, yeah, we should we should use this in the link. No. That don't make for, is, is like over communicating the reality of the situation. At least that's how I take it. But both of them come across religious, even when the, they, they, they think it was funny, but when they do the, like the little religious tone and stuff, I'm like, yo, that's what it is. Because you, you, you're just preaching to the choir. You're preaching people to rationalize their beliefs in this nonsense. Because transgenderism isn't rooted in any science, in any reality. You're using, you're using science as a skin suit, skin suit to mask up dogma, to mask up fantasy, to mask up rationalizations for why people should castrate their children. Honestly, the left, the left are like communists. They only come in here to destroy the country. But you know, I digress. Let's listen to what uh, Vivek Ramaswamy has to say. England just banned puberty blockers for all children, all minors, putting an end to a lot of the gender-affirming care and transition therapy that kids are undergoing when they transition from one gender to another. This happens on D-Trans Day, actually a new day created to commemorate the transition, particularly of killed children from one gender to another who regret it and later in life try to detransition, even though in many instances they'll never be the same again. And many of them, two young women like Chloe and Katie, who I met earlier on the campaign trail, have actually expressed their regrets in a way that at least warns other kids to prevent them from making some of those same decisions. I bring this up because there's an angle to this that's really different than you see in the traditional political discourse of scolding a lot of this behavior. That's not where I'm coming from today. I think we've created a dichotomy between compassion versus standing for truth. And I don't think that these two things have to be in tension. I don't think that if a kid is saying that I want to transition from one biological sex to a different gender, that it's a compassionate thing to do for a kid to affirm that kid's confusion. I don't think that's compassion. I, 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 I agree. I don't think that is compassion. And I think that's what the ethic the ethical question is coming in that that this whole transgenderism is a way of just get me making a means to an end if i want to castrate a, a group of people if i want to essentially euthanize these people i don't want these people to reproduce oh uh, in so in gender dis confusion so in this belief that you're a man and a woman and try to rush you to get a uh, sex surgery sex change surgery oh kenny kids are not actually getting transgenderism but you're putting puberty you're prescribing puberty blockers to them you're giving them chemical me medicine that's giving them cancer. And you think that's a good thing. At what cost? How is this not seen as a religious sacrifice similar to killing the firstborn of your child to God? Like, how, how is that any different? It's funny how it seems like history, not history repeats itself, but it seems like it always comes full circle. How the same people will call people religious zealots. Oh, you guys did this, all these backwards things. And these same very same people who are using science the same way that religious people used to use religion to justify their negative behaviors and actions and deeds in the name of their God. Instead of saying in the name of God, y'all say in the name of science, which allow people to sex change and we're supposed to affirm their gender. And if you don't affirm their gender, they prosecute you like it was blasphemy. Tell me again how this doesn't seem like a religion. These are just my thoughts. I'd like to hear yours in the comment section below. What do you think is the goal of the transgender cult? Is it extinction? Is it to let people live in the reality of how they see themselves? To live in the perception? Is it the goal of transgender transgenderism to mal reality to fit people's individual perception of themselves? Essentially playing God? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'll be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.